if we're thinking about the definition, so we have direct and indirect, meaning that some sort of reflex is directly coming up and irritating the tissues of the larynx versus indirectly through some other pathway. And then we have acid and non-acid. And so break those down for me. Would you, how, what would be the different categories? Sure. So the easiest category would be direct acid. Right. And that's, I think, what everybody thinks about. Like that's kind of the traditional, like, okay, that's what's happening. Okay. The very traditional, right? So acid is coming up, it's touching my throat tissues and it's causing me problems. So very, very easy to understand that. The second would be the direct non-acid. So this is the idea that digestive enzymes actually are not only acidic, they're non-acidic as well. And the big player in this is pepsin. So we talk about pepsin a lot. So pepsin is actually coming up all the way up to the throat and causing tissue damage. So that's direct non-acid. Then we have kind of the indirect category. So this is the idea that like their reflux, which simply means movement, can happen in the distal esophagus. And what happens distally is sensed by the throat. Right. So we think that this is more of a neural mediated type of symptomology that occurs. And this has been well documented in the GI literature. You know, you can you can dilate a balloon in the lower esophagus and patients will grab their throat. Right. Because that's where they feel the tightness. They've placed catheters and they've injected extra acid in the lower esophagus and patients feel the burning in their throat. So we know that there is a neural mediated indirect form of the most challenging one to treat. And that one, that one is, is indirect is like basically acid and non-acid. Those are kind of together. Correct. Okay. That's, that's really helpful. In thinking of these, do they happen individually or overlapping? Like do people, is it like, okay, this person has direct acid, so I'm going to treat them this way. And this person has, you know, indirect, so I'm going to treat them this way. Or is it all of these things are kind of overlapping and potentially happening at once? Yeah, I would say definitely, definitely can be overlapping and happening at once. And that's why it can be quite challenging. So usually when I really get into this with patients, usually kind of on the second or the third visit, we really try to break it down into when and where the problem is and what is the problem we're trying to address. Because if you think about it, all of us can have direct acid LPR, right? We've all felt it, right? Um, So that can definitely happen. But is that necessarily a problem? Or is that an isolated episode? And I think that's one of the big distinctions we have to help patients make. By the time they come to see us, usually it is a problem because these symptoms are happening more than just once in a while and occasionally. So once we lose that really temporal relationship and it becomes more of a chronicity issue, that's when I think we start to see more and more of the indirect LPR because now it's starting to become neurosensory. And that's when it really becomes chronic. So, you know, you've seen these patients, right, where it's like all day they're throat clearing or all day they feel mucus. Well, those aren't all day of having episodes because that really doesn't make sense for most of the patients. That's where you've really developed neurosensory or indirect form of LPR. 